Hey, it's Todd Graves. Welcome back to part three of my book review, The Single Plane Golf Swing, Play Better Golf, The Moe Norman Way. In the book, in the first two sections, we covered a lot about the address position today. I'm gonna go through a little more of the address because the address might be one of the most important things you can do to learn the single plane golf swing. And one of the reasons Mo was such a great ball striker, if I go to page 59, I wanna kinda of start here on page 59. And by the way, if you're enjoying these book reviews, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also click the little bell icon to make sure you get notified of all the videos that I have come out on the channel. Now let's look at one of the things that you see that's so unique about Mo's golf swing is the address position. On page 59 of the book, I cover the down the line view. I wanna go through this here to show you some of the significant things that you need to look for when you're converting your swing to a single plane. The first thing is that when you look down the line, you obviously see that the club is aligned with the trail arm. But I want you also to notice that the lead arm is visible above the trail arm and the legs are pretty straight. Now I want this, we well say straight but not locked out. But I actually asked Mo this question one time I was practicing with him and I said, Mo, why, why are your legs so straight at a dress? And he said, what's straighter than straight? And I thought that was a great answer because when you straighten your legs at a dress, there's just less room for, for error. There's less variables to deal with. So a lot of what you see in Mo's swing is creating positions of the body that have less variability. So you want your legs pretty straight. When you look at the club, it goes through the mid spine. You see the mid spine intersect of the club there again, but make sure that lead arm is visible above the trail arm. Your spine is tilted forward and then you have the proper club shaft aligned with the trail arm. It's not about lifting your hands higher. It's not about reaching your hands up. It's about tilt and alignment. So getting the tilt of the body correct and the arms aligned. So make sure you do a quick review of the down the line view of your own golf swing at address. Now today, here's some things I wanna cover in the book. As you go through and look at page 61 and onto page 63, we're gonna talk about grip pressure. I wanna show you how important it is, not only from the address to get your hands on the club correctly, but why and how your grip pressure applies to that. We're gonna talk about grip pressure to today. We're, and also, you'll notice that on page 65, I look at my swing, I review it in a mirror. Now, I want you to use video as well, but this is a great thing to do is check yourself out stand in front of a mirror and make sure you're getting these positions correct. Correct, and, and the mirror is a great way to do that. The other thing we're gonna to cover today is shoulder position. There's a lot of confusion on closed or open shoulders. We're gonna talk about the shoulder position today. And we're also gonna go through, as we go, we're gonna discuss ball position. This is another thing that Mo was ab an absolute genius about is where he placed the golf ball. Because when I asked Mo the question, where do you place your golf ball? He says, the golf ball never moves. I'll leave it in the same position. We're gonna talk about how the ball actually does move in your stance without moving it. Pretty interesting there. And then basically I'm gonna show you a quick way of how to get the address position on the golf course. So today we're gonna to talk a lot more about address and get into some more very, very fine details that's gonna help you even take it to the golf course. So as we wrap up some of the finer details of chapter six, which was a lot to do with the address position. And I wanna just remind you how important the address position is when we talk about the single plane swing. Because remember, as we started out this entire series, uh, you know, refreshing your memory about the book, is that if we're gonna simplify the golf swing, we must simplify the golf swing from address all the way through impact. Because if we can reduce the amount of rotation, if we can reduce the amount of stress on the body, and reduce the, the amount of times the body has to bend and shift and simplify our ability to get to impact, we have then simplified the golf swing. And we do a lot of that in the single plane swing with the address. Today I wanna to cover some of the more finer, finer details of the address position, including grip pressure, some of the idiosyncrasies of the address where the club is placed. I wanna talk about ball position, and I wanna talk about shoulder position, and we're gonna use a top camera to kinda of demonstrate to you the position of the shoulders so you can actually see what's, act what's going on. Now, there is a big difference in perception and reality. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. But I also wanna mention to you that I like to use video. You know, obviously mirrors are great when you're looking at your swing, but I like to use video as well because I wanna match the perception of what I'm doing to the reality of what I'm doing. So at any time and point in time in this, 
you should be taking a video camera out and studying your position against most position to make sure that what you're feeling you're doing is what you're actually doing. Now don't forget, we have a, a coaching a program called our Gold, Single Plane Academy Gold Membership, which is a program designed specifically so you can send your videos to our academy and we can review your swing as well. So don't forget that we have that available to you if you want us to help you coach you through your single plane golf swing. Now, let's talk grip pressure because a lot of people get a little bit confused on where the pressure should be in the hand. So let's kind of go each particular hand and talk grip pressure. Now, the other thing you'll notice is that for each one of these elements of the golf swing, I've designed particular products to help learn and train it and practice it. One of the things that I've designed here is an actual grip. I have two special grips. This one's actually a legal grip you can put in your golf club. This is gonna kinda show you some of the significant things to grip pressure that I want you to see. Uh, first thing is thumb position. Now, when, when I talk about the position of the hand, so grip pressure is relative to positions of the hand how you apply pressure to the grip. I want you to know that when you hold the club in the lead hand, that you're, the fingers are wrapping the club, so the fingers are holding the club up into the heel pad of the hand. So what you're getting is the fingers are pu pulling the pressure into the heel pad. So it's these last three fingers that have most of the pressure, and that's pulling it into the heel pad. Now, that's where you feel the pressure. Mo said sometimes he was drawing blood, but that's where I feel it. Like if I put my hand this direction, that's where I feel that the pressure is resting up into the heel pad of the hand. Now, there's no pressure on this thumb. However, when you move a golf club and swing it, you're gonna run into areas where you feel more pressure points. But right now at address, I'm just feeling the pressure on the fingers pulling that club up into the heel pad. So there's the pressure of the lead hand. Now the trail hand's a little bit more significant, and I want to show you how if I, take, if I take a golf ball, let's say you're going to skip a rock and throw it sidearm. You'll see me do some of this demonstration in the book where I talk about skipping a rock. Now, if you, notice what happens when you do this. And I make this demonstration because what I want you to understand about the grip is, and me, people make a huge deal about grip position, hand position. And look, the hands are just basically holding the golf club. The hands can't move a golf club. They're just clamps. So how you position the clamps, in other words, how you put the body and rotate the clamp is very important. It's more important than, than basically what, what the actual hands are doing. So how we position the hands, because our wrists are reacting to the position of the hands. So I want to demonstrate this by, by taking this ball, and let's say I was going to skip a rock. And let's say you're going to skip it sideways like this, right? So a sidearm throw. Notice what, let's look at the position of the body, but also I want you to notice what happens where I position the rock. Notice how the hand positions the rock in the longest lever. That's the longest lever from the wrist joint all the way to my fingertip there, that knuckle. There's the longest lever I can make with this hand. That's the longest lever. So what you, when, you, when you skip a rock, so I'm going to produce speed. When, I'm, when I talk about skipping a rock, I'm talking about producing speed. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my arm back, arm and shoulder back, torso ro rotates closed. Then I'm going to bring, rotate my torso forward, look at my arm, it's still bent. Then I'm going to get to about here, then I'm going to straighten the arm and release the wrist. Notice how, it's, first of all, it's a non-rotational movement. I'm not rotating that, but I want you to know that that wrist, most of the speed, 75% of the swing speed is produced from right here to right through there. That's where the wrist has the ability to extend and release. That's when the lever gets used to skip the rock. But here's what I want you to notice about what's happening here, is notice where the rock is relative to that lever. It's, on the, it's in the longest lever I can make with the hand. So I'm utilizing the lever. So how does this apply to pressure? Well, let's look at how we grip a golf club. So this is why well, we'll go into palm grip in a second, but this is why when, I, when you grip the golf club, I want you to overlap, take this finger, notice my hand, notice my wrist, my, my knuckles very close together in the lead hand. I'm gonna overlap my hand. I'm gonna place the thumb. I'm gonna tilt my body when I do this. So remember that we talked about this in the last section. I'm gonna bring my hand up, I'm gonna overlap. The thumb is gonna be wrapped by the, by the palm of the hand. So the thumb is sitting inside the palm and notice that the final pressure point on this hand is right here, right here where I was skipping that rock, right in the same spot. So now, because of the position of the hand, I'm able to utilize the lever 
of the hand and make that exact same motion that I made when I skipped the rock. So there's your pressure point. It's right inside, I'm gonna point it out to you here. It's right inside this knuckle here, right there. That's where you're hooking the golf club. That's where you're able to skip and use the longest lever of this hand. Now, one final note to pressure points. So now you have the lead hand pressure. You have the trail hand lever being used. Now, why do I want you to overlap? Well, because what I wanna do now is I wanna join the wrists together. So I want them to work together, and you'll see this in the book. You'll see that, that I, I talk about how the wrist can now work together. I want you to experiment with something. And if you take the, the club and you start separating the wrist, you'll notice that they have a hard time working together. So the further the hands get apart, the more difficult it is to get the, work, the wrist to work together. When I, when I overlap the hand, and I then wrap the hand, ar the, the hand around that thumb, and I only really care about that pressure point, then what I have is I have two pressure points working together because the wrist can work together. So the pressure point in the hands and the wrists work in conjunction with each other. That's what I want you to understand about this. Remember the hands are just simply levers and clamps. The wrists actually are what's working. So now I can use them correctly when I go to make this golf club move with speed. So orientation is very important. So making sure your body's tilted and you get the right orientation of the wrist position in the hand. And then orientation of the hand, that's the rotation. And then bringing this up and making sure we have the proper pressure points so we can utilize those levers and the hands can work together. All that is detailed in the book, but it's very important you get that right. So let's go ahead and take that now, take the hand position, the tilt of the body and those pressure points, and let's talk about the, how it relates to my ball position and alignment, and then we'll talk about shoulder position. So now, let's take, and by the way, this is another training product I've created. This is this, is this uh, Fingal, Feeling of Greatness training club. This basically has a flat spot on top. It has a position for your thumb. It aligns, it aligns the club correctly once again because of the way the club it has a, a place for the pressure of the hand there, and it has a form spot. Notice there's another pressure point here. So this kind of details for you the pressure of the hand. So now I have my training club here to kind of demonstrate that. Now, going into the address, let's talk ball position because a lot of people get confused on ball position. But I want you to, to know of what, what Mo taught me about ball position. The first thing he says is that the ball never moves. So you're like, okay, it's interesting. The ball stays in the same position. But here's what's actually happening. So I want you to go, I'm going to do a demonstration for you here. I'm going to go ahead and stand and I'm going to basically put this ball position just a few inches in, inside my lead foot, right? Now watch what happens to, and I'm going to go into my tilt, right? So there's my tilt. Watch what happens when I widen my feet. Do you see how this shoulder goes further behind the golf ball? And then when I narrow my feet, see how that shoulder goes more in front of the golf ball? So if I go wide or I go narrow, the ball is not moving, but this relationship to my lead shoulder and the pivot point is getting more behind the golf ball or more forward. Now, when that, when that, what comes to ball striking is this, and just pay attention to this golf ball right here. Notice how what, when we strike a golf ball, we want that, that hands to be in front with an iron and the shaft to be leaning. That's how we compress the golf ball, see that? So we, uh, different clubs have a different requirement for shaft lean. You want more shaft lean with the wedge and you want less shaft lean with an iron. But how do you do all that? You can't be thinking about all that stuff. We well, don't have to, because look, just like Mo said, if I leave the ball position where it's at, and this is a six iron, for example, and I want, I basically leave the ball there. I take a six iron stance width, and guess what? I hit hit the ball with the ideal shaft lean for a six iron. Let's grab a wedge. So let me say, let's say I had a wedge in my hand. Now this is obviously a shorter golf club, so I'm closer to the golf ball. But look at this now, then I go, I go more narrow, and look, I have more shaft lean with the wedge. Even though the ball is still five inches inside my lead foot, I now have more shaft lean with the wedge. Why? Because, because of my narrow stance, the shaft is more in front. See that? Let's grab a three iron just to give you the demonstration. Now, this would be the longest iron in my bag. It's also the widest stance, so watch now. So look, five inches inside my lead foot still, but now my stance is wider, and look what happens. Look at my shoulder, it's more back, right? And look what happens. Now when I get to impact, 
less shaft lean. See that? So you have that much shaft lean with a three iron, that much shaft lean with a wedge. So what you're getting is, Mo is exactly right. I'm leaving the ball in the same relationship to my lead foot. So the lead foot golf ball relationship is really the one you gotta pay attention to. And then obviously widen the trail foot for the longer clubs and, and narrow it for the shorter clubs. Now the only variation to this is with the wood because now you see the ball's on the tee. So watch what happens. And here's the thing about hitting, for example, a driver. You don't need shaft lean with a driver. This driver is designed, you wanna launch the ball, striking maybe even slightly on the upward motion of the club. So how do you deal with that? Well, you just take a wide stance, you put the ball further towards the lead foot, and now what happens is when I swing, when I come down, the ball goes through the bottom of the arc, and then it starts lifting, and it hits it off the tee. So that's just leaving the ball more forward so it comes upward on the arc. Now, so ball position is critically important. Let's, let's, let me show you a little training aid that I designed. This is the alignment and ball position trainer. And so what you see here is a lead foot stays in its position. You got the driver ball position, which we'll put down. You got this iron ball position, which where you hit every iron shot from. Then look at this. Then you have the stance width, wedge through seven iron, six iron, five iron, four, three, hybrid, then fairway wood driver. So I'm gonna put this on the ground here. And what you're gonna have, so I'll move this back just slightly. So now what you have, you're gonna have the driver ball position and iron ball position. Now let's talk about how I can look, I can basically, I have the same exact setup, right? Same exact setup, except my stance is getting a slightly wider and the club is getting a little longer. But I want you to, sh to show you something here. I'm gonna go with driver first. I'm gonna leave this ball here at iron ball position. Watch when I set up to the golf ball here, how the club head is always beneath my nose because I want the pivot point relationship. This was in section two. You saw me talk about pivot point relationships. So I'm gonna go ahead and get set up here. Now, lead arm alignment, just like we talked about, right? There's that lead arm alignment. There's a, there's a tilt of my body and the trail arm coming down. Notice how the club head is beneath my nose and it's still square, okay? The club is still square, but the ball position is obviously inside my lead foot. So now what you're getting, all right, what you're getting is a club head beneath my nose and there's a space between club and ball. So I want you to notice the club the space between club and ball. But my setup is that same relationship, okay? Now watch this. Let me go all the way into a seven iron. Now, I'm gonna get the exact same setup except my, my ball position is now five inches on the lead foot, that same ball position I'm gonna talk about. But what, I'm gonna narrow my feet to seven iron width and look, the club, is still beneath my nose. I still have it lined up to my lead arm in the pivot point, but look, there's less space between club and ball, right? So I didn't change my setup. The ball position staying in its position. Now let's do one more club. Let's go to that three iron again. So I'm gonna leave my lead foot in the same spot, ball position the same. I haven't changed that. Watch this. There's my three iron stance width. And now look, there's a little more space between club and ball and my club is beneath my nose. So my, the club is always beneath my nose, right? Always beneath my nose. And the stance width is adjusting just slightly for each club. So I'm never changing my address except for stance width. That's what it comes down to. I always feel the exact same at address. The other thing I wanna cover here is when I have the ball position on an iron ball position here, I wanna show you that the club face is square. And this is where we have to talk about shoulders. A lot of people think a lot of people think, well, since the club is behind the ball, that they're turning their shoulders. I don't want you to turn your shoulders to hit this position. Matter of fact, we're gonna use a top angle here, and I wanna do a quick demonstration as I show you this. So when you look at the top view of my body, I'm gonna stand straight up and down here. And let me just uh, draw, get my alignment trying to look pretty square here. Okay, so now there's, there's my ball position. So you see the iron ball position, driver ball position. So you see the ball positions there and you see my shoulders, I'm gonna keep them square to that alignment trainer. Now notice my shoulders are pretty square, right? Okay, so my shoulders look pretty square. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna tilt my body. Notice how my shoulders, now 
we have to we have to define a couple of things here. There's a difference between shoulders, which is torso shoulder blades, and the arm, the, this independently hinged shoulder joint that I can move. Because I can move my shoulders in front of me. See, my shoulders are moving, but my torso is not. So I think this is where people get confused, but let's just go through it. So I'm gonna stand here square to this alignment trainer. Now, well, I'm gonna tilt my body. Now, what you're gonna see is, is my torso opens up slightly just from tilting. We call that side bend, right? Now watch this. I'm gonna bring my lead arm out, look at my shoulder come in, and then watch my trail hand. Watch how much my torso opens up. See, my torso goes to about 50. Look at that little logo on my shirt. My torso is opening up when I do this. Because why is that? My hand is lower on the club, and then my torso has to open up. So what I want is, I want your, and this is going to sound a bit confusing, but as long as you're studying those angles that I showed you down the line face on, you'll get this. I want the torso open, but the front of the shoulders closed. All right? And the club will be square. So let me go, let me just put, be able the driver and show you this. So the torso, so what you're seeing is the torso is open slightly, but the front of my shoulders is, is closed. So the torso is open, but look at the front of my shoulders, slightly closed to the target line, but my torso is slightly open, okay? So now you're getting slightly open, op what I call open torso, closed shoulders. See that? So I think you gotta make a, and this is the study in the work I did with Mo, was understanding how is he setting up with the club behind the ball still square? And remember, and I'm gonna, I wanna show this from the top view, look at the club, it's always left-sided. See how the club is always on the left side of my body? Look at this, backswing, downswing. I'm, I'm choking down on the club to show you this. We're gonna do more of this in the next section, but look at this, how the club is always on the lead side of my body. And to get that, notice how the club, going to the pivot point, see it's on the pivot point there on the lead side of my body, now watch, watch how long it can stay square. See this, it can stay square. See that? Stay square. So it's so important to get this upper body relationship where the torso is slightly open and the shoulders are in front of you looking closed. Now let me go down the line and show you that. And I'll set this up for you here. Um, the way you look at this, and so you know, I kind of mentioned to you that you need to be basically studying your, your video or sending it into our coaches so we can see this. It's critical to get the proper angles here. So there's my, I'll just do it with a, with a six iron or seven iron here. So here we go. So I'm gonna move this ball here so you don't see that one. So now we have a down the line view of torso open, shoulders closed. So here we go. I'm gonna set this club, basically get my proper stance with foot position, ball position. And notice how, because of side bend, you want the lead arm to become visible. Because this is like a review for your address. Trail arm comes in. You, you don't wanna see any gap between the arms. See, if you see gap between the arms, you've got too much tilt and your torso is closed. So, as long as you don't see gap between the arms, it's a, it, it's a side bend opening up issue. So now my torso is open and my shoulders appear closed. So it's a torso open, shoulders looking closed position. Now, one final thing, and we'll wrap it up with this. When you get this address position correct, you're gonna feel like you can be very left-sided with the swing. So we're gonna feel very, very left-sided with the golf swing. Now, what I wanna make, I wanna show you one more thing that happens when you put the club on the ground because, and let me, I'll, and, and I'll go through some more detail in, in the science of this when we start talking motion, but there's some science behind this. I'll give you some numbers just so you have the reference because you're gonna look forward to the next segment here when I talk a little bit of data. At address, my torso is approximately 15 degrees open, which we call positive, okay? So remember the work I did with Dr. Neil? You saw some of his clips in the last video. Dr. Neil and I, we study this stuff. So the torso is slightly open. So my torso is about 15 degrees open. Now, at impact, the pelvis is open and the torso is further, is more open. So about 35, 30 to 35 at impact. So watch this. When I put this club on the ground behind the ball, what you see is that 
even though it's, it's behind the golf ball about six inches or seven inches, notice how it's slightly on the heel of the club. So it's slightly on the inside of the golf club at, a, at that address point. Now, and you can see that easily from the top view, how it's slightly on the inside of the club, because watch this. I'm gonna go to impact, watch when I go to impact, notice how because of my torso turn, it, it hits the sweet spot of the club. So you get it on the heel, and then when you come down to impact, it's gonna be towards the center of the club because there's a little more shaft lean and the club is moving because of torso rotation. So you wanna set the club slightly on the heel and you watch all good ball strikers, especially Mo did this, and then at impact, it's a little bit closer to the body, all right? Very interesting, right? So you set it on the heel. What I don't wanna see, one of the worst things you can do, and we'll I'll just finish the thing off here with talking about the mistakes I see when people do this stuff, is they set it on the toe of the club and now they've lost the spatial relationship. So I want you to give you your space, put it on the heel of the club, give yourself that space. Don't put it towards the toe of the club. The other thing I see, and you know, Mo talked a lot about this, is how the club, and we're gonna talk more about this when we start talking swing motion. But when you get this club placed properly behind the ball, so I get my proper setup, and the club is placed beneath my nose, and it's going to the pivot point, so there's my setup. When I get the setup in the correct position, the club will easily move to the inside and back to the plane. I don't want to see you do this. When you put the club next to the ball, here's you have a problem because notice it changes my tilt and rotation. The club will move to the outside. Mo was a genius when he figured this out because we ha now have a we, in the last two segments on this in this book review, we have really detailed the address position. What we're doing here is we're establishing your foundation for your backswing. I'm going to say that again. We're establishing your foundation for the backswing. In other words, we're putting the body in a position to make it the, as easy as possible to go from address back into impact. And we don't want to change that. So if you go like this, if you put the club too close to the ball or you don't get your shoulders, the club's not going to, you're not going to naturally move the club back and on plane. Because let me finish off by saying this, swing plane is a naturally occurring event from proper motion. So you will move the club on the proper plane, which we're gonna talk about as we go through more of the golf swing, but you don't have to think about it. You can hit, this, hit these positions correctly, hit your positions correctly, if you start with the proper positions of your body. I'll leave you with that today. Thank you for joining me for this part, part three of the book review, and here's the thing about it. If you're enjoying this content, and you're enjoying going through the book, you may not have a copy of the book, you can always find a link to buy the book from Amazon, or from my channel below. And if you're enjoying this content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little icon, the bell button here, so you get notified every time we produce a new video. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next segment.